Jan Halper Hayes is here, um, former worldwide vice president of Republican Overseas, and she was a member of Donald Trump's transition team. Right, first of all, then, as a form of protest against excessive use of force by police against African Americans, how do you view it? How effective do you think it has been? Well, I think it has been very ineffective. I mean, it's hurt businesses. Um, let me first say that they have every right to their freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. However, they're paid to do a job, and the fans are upset about a political issue coming into play. In, in, in the sporting arena? In, in the sporting arena. I mean, Americans go to their football games. They get there between 7.30 and 9 in the morning to have their tailgate parties. They start with mimosas, they're barbecuing, and they have a great time to go in at one. We go to sports for enjoyment. And as a result, uh, last week, the 49ers and the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams game, um, the stadium was half empty. And when the tickets usually are 60 to $200, they were selling them for $14 and couldn't get takers. Is that because of the, them taking the knee? Yes. Okay, let me bring in, we have got Brent now, we can talk to him, Brent Martineau. He's in Florida, sports broadcaster for CBS and Fox, who was at the game at Wembley yesterday. And you've got back there overnight, have you, Brent, um, between the Jaguars and the Baltimore Ravens. Thank you for, for talking to us. Um, Donald Trump says any player who does this should be fired. What do you say? Well, I think uh, that's not going to happen because I think what we saw in the last 48 hours or so is a bunch of teams and NFL owners that support their players. So uh, I, I think they're trying to keep this out of the political realm um, as much as possible and turn it into what it is as a demonstration and a protest um, for change and spark conversation. So at least as of right now, I think the ownership in the NFL has firmly and, and been pretty clear in the last 24 to 48 hours that that's what they want to do. Right. Um, do you agree with Jan that people are staying away from the games now because, because politics is being brought into the sporting arena? Well, I think so. I, I just don't know yet if we have a big enough sample of what this may mean long term. Mm -hmm. um, this is a vocal, I don't want to say minority right now, it's a vocal uh, topic on both sides. But uh, I, I think it's too early to say just because of what's transpired this weekend, people are not going to show up at the next Jacksonville Jaguars football game here in Jacksonville, Florida, or all across the country now. We have had a, a lot of talk on social media. We have had a lot of emails to our TV stations uh, on my social media account uh, that said, hey, I'm done with the NFL. I'm done with the Jaguars. I'm done with this team or that team. So uh, we'll see if people act on that and how long it, uh, it, it takes for that to, to happen. Mm. But I will say this. I think it's working. Whatever the players are trying to accomplish, uh, they are trying to spark change. But when you try to spark change, you also try to spark conversation. Um, and right or wrong, whatever side you agree on, uh, how you feel about it, uh, we spent the entire flight home, a nine-hour flight, uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars in many pockets of that airplane talking about this very topic. And on social media, it's about this conversation. And it's not going away. We are going to talk about it. So I think the fact that discussions are being made about it, that we are discussing it right now from uh, the United States to the United Kingdom, yeah. um, I think that that's... That's a positive for the folks that are trying to spark change. John, what would you say with, to, to Brent? Is, he says it's a positive. Well, I very much agree that it is a positive to bring this issue out. I don't agree with the fact that these players are, played, are paid to entertain and not to bring politics in. But here's the other hypocrisy of it. The NFL owners are supporting them. Yeah. But the Dallas Cowboys wanted to put a decal on their helmet saying arm in arm, meaning they supported the Dallas police and they were forbidden to do that. So if they want their freedom of speech, why do you deny the Dallas Cowboys that, but yet you let people really disrespect our national anthem and our flag. Now, what I mean, the that, Steelers it, it, sorry, go it, what the Steelers did, only one player came out for the national anthem and the others stayed in the locker room. I think that says a lot more. Keep it hidden. 
Yeah. Okay, well, let, let me bring in Keith Mitchell, um, who is a, a former NFL linebacker for the New Orleans Saints, the Houston Texans and Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars were playing at Wembley yesterday. Keith Mitchell, thank you for talking to us. Is it disrespecting the flag, as Jan here says, and as um, Donald Trump has said? Hey, um, I don't believe it's disrespecting the flag. I believe it's uh, using the platform to get the word out uh, it's been used in movies, it's been used in music, uh, you name it, books, and etc. But the situation still remains. So people uh, are still, you know, haven't gotten it. So it's just putting the word out on the platform that we call sports. So I don't think it has anything to do with our patriotism or our respect for the military. I personally, uh, I'm retired now. I, I do a lot of work with military. Uh, these guys put their lives on the line to protect us. It has nothing to do with those guys. It's about the, uh, the, the injustice in our community. Yeah, and if you, as a black man, if you were playing in the NFL over the weekend, would you have taken the knee during the anthem? Uh, I, I would. I would. Uh, only in regards to what's happening and for the injustice in the community. Again, nothing to do with the military. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Jan, do you accept that? I mean, it's Donald Trump who says it's anti-American, it's anti-military. You've heard Keith Mitchell say it's definitely not. He absolutely has respect for the servicemen and women who've, who fought for, for, for people like him, for people like you. I respect his right to do it on his own time, on social media, on his Facebook page. But it, the, here are some of the ramifications. One is that ESPN has lost 3 million subscribers, and as a result, Disney stock has gone down 17.5%. The stadiums are empty. They are absolutely empty. And that is hurting advertising revenue because mm -hmm. people aren't watching the NFL on TV. In fact, they're estimating 200 million lost in ad revenue. Okay. And wait till the teams aren't making that much money and there's salary negotiations. Then the players will think about it. Let me bring in, I mean, they are thinking about it. You can't, you, they are, you know, thinking about it and using a decision and, you know, making an informed decision whether you disagree with it or not. This email from Brendan, I can't believe your guest, that's you, is saying this is just a political issue. People are dying, being shot and killed unlawfully. It's now hit the world stage and rightly so. Change comes through people who are famous doing things like this. I love visiting the States, but your guest is wrong. And if Donald Trump visits here, I'll take a knee. You know, to each his own, mm. really. Okay. I mean, I respect that. Um, I respect their right, and I respect the issue, and it is a concern. But they're not talking about all the money that has gone to make the police forces that were really biased wear um, body cameras so that it's monitoring their behavior as well as tracking what's going on. Okay.